With Moho, you have the ability to create actions that can be reused in a variety of ways. And to get started, we're going to use Kusi here and create a walk cycle that can be reused as many times as we wish. So the first thing we want to do is bring up the actions panel and let's go to frame zero. And on the actions panel, we want to make sure that nothing is selected in this case for the bone layer. And we want to make sure that we are on that bone layer so that way we can create an action for it. So once you have all that, we're going to come over here to the actions panel and click on the new action button. And here, action 26 can be renamed to, let's just say walk cycle, and then click OK. You're now inside of a new action, and you can determine this by the fact that we have a red arrow pointing to walk cycle, but also your timeline is tinted pink, indicating that you are now working on an action. If you go back here to mainline by double clicking, you can see it's now dark gray. So let's go back here to that walk cycle by double clicking again, and we can get started. We're just going to do a very simple walk cycle here. So we'll start by taking the anchors, and I'm just going to bring out this leg like so, and then bring the other one back a little bit. So something like that. Next, let's move the arms. So with the back leg being out, I want to bring the back arm back doing the opposite of what its counterpart limb is doing. So here the front arm, since the front leg is being pushed back, will come forward. So something like that. Now we can go to frame 12 and we're just going to do the opposite here. I'm just going to grab this front anchor and move it back, grab the back anchor and move it up. And I just want to make sure that that back anchor is close to the X position of the front. And it looks pretty close. So I think we should be good to go with that. Now we're going to reverse the arms once again. So just come in here and we can go something like that. Then on frame 24, I'm going to copy the frames from one and paste them on 24 with control C and then control V. So here we have something that looks like this now. And as we play through the action, it's going to loop just the keys, which can give us a good idea of how this can cycle. So now we're going to keep going by building this up. Coming back here, let's go to frame six and we can see now the legs are starting to cross. So we're just going to grab this front leg here and bring it up like so. So we kind of have this going on now and it comes down. And then on frame 18, when we have the back leg crossing, we'll have that one come up like so, since that's going to be the one that reaches out. So now you have something that goes like this. And we can add some shifting weight to this as well. So perhaps when both feet are on the ground, we can come in here and maybe just shift this down a little bit. And then when we have on frame six, the push up, maybe just come in and kind of bring it up a little bit like that. And then on frame 12, we can bring her down again. And looking at frame six now, I might bring her down a little bit more as well. And maybe just adjust the targets here. Just a little bit, something like this maybe. So there we go. So it's kind of like this. And then we're going to go up with this one. And then on frame 24, we're just going to copy those keys over again from frame one. So there we go. So now you have something that's more like this. Now I have this part here where she goes back a little bit on frame six, and I don't really like that. So I'm just going to bring this over a little bit. And I'm going to raise her up just a little bit more. And maybe here, I'll raise her up just a little bit on frame 12 so her dip isn't as drastic. And there we go. So now if you come in here and you play this out, you can see that we have something like this going on. And you could continue if you wanted to. Maybe you want to shift her weight a little bit more like this when she's coming down. We could go in and do all sorts of things like that to continue the process of building the walk cycle. But 
This is looking pretty good. I'm just going to copy those keys from one to 24 one more time, just to make sure we're good there. So now we have our walk cycle in place. Again, we could do more with this, but for this process, it's looking pretty good. So now we can double click on main line to go back out. And when we're on the main line, we have a blank timeline. So let's say you're animating out your character here. And let's just say she's doing something. I'm not quite sure what, perhaps she's looking at something on the ground or something to that effect. We can come in here and just sort of adjust it like so. So she's looking down and then maybe she looks there for a moment and then she kind of goes up like this. And maybe she has an idea as to what she wants to do and she's looking at the audience. And of course, I'm kind of just doing this quick, but looking down, looks up. And then maybe on frame 48, you want to start the walk cycle. So I'm going to add some keys on 48 and then let's just go to 54 and then come down here and click once on walk cycle. And then you have the ability to add the action as a reference or as a copy. If you insert a copy, it's going to allow you to alter the keyframes without altering the original action. If you insert a reference, it's like reference layers. If you make a change to the main action that you're referencing, then those changes will be reflected throughout the timeline. So as an example, if I came in here and I insert a copy, you can see now that it just puts those keyframes in just like that. And then we have this little jump down like this. I'm just going to come in here and remove these two keys. So that way we have a more seamless transition from the walk cycle, kind of like this. So you could then go in and if you wanted to cycle this walk cycle, so we could go to this frame and choose to cycle and I'll set this to absolute and we can bring this up to let's say frame 55 so something like this so you go like this and then you start walking and then she can keep walking like that there we go now as you can see, since we inserted a copy, we could come in here and adjust these keys. So if we wanted to adjust the way the walk cycle is looking, you can see we can come in here and adjust all that, and it's adjusting the speed of this. But if we were to come over here to the walk cycle, and as stated, if we insert a reference instead of a copy, it's going to change the way not only how this looks in the timeline, but what we can do with it. So here you can see it says walk cycle, which is indicating the action and it just plays the action out as it's seen on the actions panel. But if we go in here to the walk cycle itself, and let's say on frame six, we decide that we want to raise her hands this way. Let's go back here to mainline now. And now you can see with the walk cycle, she does just that. And so those are the differences between referencing and adding copies. Also, if you wanted this cycle to repeat, with the reference intact, we can go back here to walk cycle and inside of that action, go to frame 24 and then choose to cycle it. And you can see it's cycling back to frame two, which is fine for us. So now if we go back here to mainline and we play this out, you can see now it's just going to repeat just like that. So there you go. That's a little bit about how you can build actions and reuse them and the differences between referencing and inserting copies.